In this lesson, we're going to talk about ARDS. Uh, it stands for acute respiratory distress syndrome. So ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. We most commonly see this in patients in the ICU, but many times it's the med surge nurses that see the signs and they advocate to get their patients upgraded to the ICU. It's important that you know what to look for. Now, this is near and dear to my heart because a close friend's father passed away from this. Uh, you can read more about his story in the case study attached to this lesson, so be sure to check that out. So what is acute respiratory distress syndrome? In short, it is a progressive disorder that prevents appropriate uh, gas exchange and leads to respiratory failure. Now, what happens is some sort of inflammatory or immune response occurs within the lungs and it initiates this cascade of events. Now, this could be anything from sepsis to burn injuries to trauma, or even we see it a lot in near drownings. So what happens is the little capillaries around the alveoli have increased permeability. That means they let more fluid in than they normally would. And so you end up with this fluid filling the alveoli. So they, they've lost their ability to hold the fluid in, and so the fluid leaks out, and the fluid comes into the alveoli. And so when that happens, you also have these inflammatory cytokines. Remember, this inflammation process causes cytokines to be released, and those are actually going to damage the lung tissue itself. So that produces more fluid in the alveoli. And then because of all of this damage to the tissue, you end up with scarring, and that decreases lung compliance, which means it's difficult to expand, okay? So if the lungs can't expand, they're damaged, and there's a bunch of fluid in the alveoli. So honestly, how well do you think they're going to be able to perform gas exchange, right? Not well. So gas exchange is severely impaired. So how do we know that this is happening? How are we going to diagnose this? Well, unfortunately, there's no specific biomarker or lab test we can do. We have to look at the clinical signs first, and then we use chest x-rays and ABGs to confirm our suspicions. So you'll, of course, see evidence of whatever the underlying condition was. Maybe they had a pneumonia. That's a really common thing that causes ARDS. So they had pneumonia. So you're going to see symptoms of this underlying condition. Um, then you're going to be keeping an eye out for this because you know they're at risk. So you're going to start seeing that they start requiring more and more oxygen to get the same SATs. So they were on two liters. Now they're on four. Then you have to move them up to six. But their SATs are still, let's say, 92%. That's as high as you can get them. So they're just not responding to that same amount of oxygen anymore. So then when you do these diagnostics, this chest X-ray and the ABG, that's when you're going to start seeing the problems. The chest x-ray will show uh, diffuse bilateral infiltrates. So if you remember, air moving is supposed to be black. So when you start seeing white on your chest x-rays, we call this a white out. This is one of the classic signs of ARDS is this diffuse infiltrates, this white out of your chest x-ray where it's all fluid instead of air, okay? Um, that means there's just no air moving. Then on the ABG, we're going to see what's called refractory hypoxemia. Now, we've already started to see this. What this means is that their uh, oxygenation status isn't responding. It's refractory. It's not responding to oxygen. Well, we've already seen that up here because we were having to increase our oxygen needs. Um, but, but what we're able to do is actually put a number on it. So that number is called the PF ratio or the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio. If it's less than 300, that's mild ARDS, less than 200 is moderate, and less than 100 is severe. So in a normal person, we would expect it to be above 300. So the way that we calculate this is we take their PaO2, which is a pressure, and divide it by their FiO2, which is a percentage. So let's say that we have a patient whose PaO2 is 96. And you think that's great because it's within normal range, normal PaO2, 60 to 100, right? Except normal PaO2 is 60 to 100 on room air. This patient, I'm going to tell you, is actually on 60% oxygen. 
So if we take that 96 and we divide it by 60%, 60% is 0 0.6 if you make it a decimal, what we're going to discover is that their PF ratio is actually 160. So now they've fallen into this moderate ARDS level. So it's a super quick way for you to interpret their ABG, determine what their FiO2 is, which if you review the hierarchy of oxygen delivery lesson, that will give you a great detail as to how to know what their FiO2 is. So you'll see this, you'll notice their PF ratio is low, and you're going to look super smart in clinicals or as a new grad when you say, hey, this patient's in trouble, or you ask about patient's PF ratio, you're really going to be able to catch this before it gets worse. So when it comes to management, unfortunately, there's no specific drug that's ever proven to be effective in treating ARDS. The best thing we can do is to treat the underlying cause. So if it's pneumonia, we give antibiotics, etc. The biggest thing you need to know here is that the sooner we can start treating the cause, the better the outcomes will be for the patient. Um, the other things that we can do is some special interventions for ventilatory support, one of which is the prone position. Now, the cool thing about prone position is it actually allows for better expansion of the lungs. You know, on the front of the chest, we've got the heart, we've got um, all the ribs, whereas on the back, it allows for better expansion if we can expose their back and let the lungs expand that way. So prone positioning helps a lot. We also have special modes on the ventilator that we can use that will help to open up those alveoli and keep the air flowing appropriately. And one of the most common ones we're going to do is we're going to increase their PEEP. PEEP stands for positive end expiratory pressure, and it just helps to keep the lungs open and inflated at the end of expiration so that those alveoli don't collapse. Now, in terms of preventing complications, the main thing we want to prevent in these patients is VAP or ventilator associated pneumonia. Um, your facility is going to have VAP bundles that'll tell you what you need to do to prevent these. It's things like oral care and suctioning, things like uh, keeping the head of the bed elevated, et cetera. You know, the last thing we want to do is add another infectious process on top of everything else that's going on. So this is really important that we keep an eye out for this. So when it comes to nursing interventions, our number one priority is going to be to recognize this as it starts to progress and advance this patient to the right level of care as soon as possible. The hope is that the sooner we begin to address the underlying condition, the less likely they are to develop ARDS or the less severe their ARDS will be. So we focus on oxygenation and gas exchange. We're going to monitor their SpO2 and their ABGs. We're going to look at that PF ratio to see if things are getting worse. And then we want to prevent any further infections, especially preventing VAP. Again, the last thing we need to do is make this problem worse with another infectious process. Make sure you check out the care plan attached to this lesson to see more specific nursing interventions and rationales. So remember that ARDS is a progressive disorder that prevents gas exchange because of this inflammatory response that causes widespread fluid and damage to the lung tissues. Classic signs are refractory hypoxemia, so that's that decreasing PF ratio, and then diffuse bilateral infiltrates on the chest x-ray. Remember, that's that whiteout. So decreasing PF ratio and a whiteout on the chest x-ray are your classic signs. Our goal is to treat the underlying cause, to catch it sooner rather than later, and do whatever the patient needs us to do to support their oxygenation and ventilation while their lungs are healing. And then again, remember, we really need to prevent complications. Now, one cool way to remember ARDS is think of it like the Titanic. It hit an iceberg, it punched all these little holes in the hull of the ship, and water started pouring in over the bulkheads and over the flood walls and up the stairs, and then it consumed the whole boat, right? The only way to save the Titanic at that point would have been to hoist it out of the water and patch the holes. So that's what we do for ARDS. The ventilatory support is like hoisting it out of the water, trying to prevent it from going under, and treating the underlying cause is us patching the holes, okay? So think of the Titanic. We don't want our ship to sink. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.